What's going on everyone, CJ back here with a brand new episode of the Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise, that is right, welcome back. 4-3 on the season here, coming off the heels of a heartbreaking loss to the Denver Broncos, of course a last second walk-off field goal by them won that game in absolutely devastating fashion and uh, if we hope to stay above 500, we have to, a very tall task ahead of us today. Never easy to play them as it is, but we are taking on the 6-1 Kansas City Chiefs, and we have to, of course, game plan for an elite quarterback. No introduction needed. That is one Patrick Mahomes. So Patrick obviously presents a major challenge for our defense this week. Where do you see other defenses having successes? I mean, pressure I don't think is going to get there, but blanket coverage may, because we have had folks such as Kendall Fuller, Getting a lot of interceptions this season. And of course, Patrick is so good at identifying pressure. That makes it hard to bring the heat. And we have to beat the Chiefs today and have four plus pass deflections and interceptions combined. That seems like an extremely lofty goal, even by Madden's circumstances. But our entire defense does get plus three to man coverage and zone coverage this week. So that will certainly help. But man, four plus pass deflections and interceptions. I don't know about that. We also got to discuss an oppose an opponent's streaking X-Factor player. It's got to still be Patrick, I would assume, right? Uh, facing Chris Jones. No, okay. Who's caused many problems for opposing offenses in recent weeks. Any plan to stop him? Nope. No plan whatsoever. We're not going to stop him. Uh, he's going to get seven sacks on JJ Ford today. He's a fantastic player, and he is going to get his. He's proven that throughout his career. And uh, I'm not sure if there's any surefire way to stop him. So we got to try to hold Chris Jones to one sack or fewer. It's going to be a tall task and don't know if we're going to necessarily be able to do it. And Chris Jones has his X Factor active to start the game to make matters worse. So, yep. Thanks a lot, Madden. I already did not want to play the Chiefs and now I don't want to play him even more. So Mock Draft 2 is here, although not going to take a look at that because our, we're not going to be making too much noise in this upcoming draft here we have a third round pick we have a sixth round pick and we have a seventh round pick and not going to even entertain the idea of moving up in this draft so we really got to make this third round pick that we got from trading brian robinson the other week super super critical now i mainly took a look at edge rushers defensive tackles and mike linebackers there's a couple guys here that would probably require a trade up in order to secure them they both do look really good though jerry pete is a defensive tackle we play in the 4-3 defense so of course we got jonathan allen and we really need somebody to play alongside him we got rookie glenn may but he's a low overall not really developing too much so jerry here looks pretty good he's a run stopper that also has b power moves and somewhere in the a to c range for finesse moves as well he's a pretty good athlete and his core skills look really good but round two to three projection almost certain we'd have to trade up to get him same goes for mr justin booth here he could be our cody barton replacement of course we did also in that brian robinson trade acquire uh rookie middle linebacker tony knights out of ucla i believe and justin here is a freak athlete he would be very very good off the rip his core skills aren't phenomenal but as i always say you can develop and you can teach skills but the athletics and the intangibles the, that's just a god-given talent and justin booth definitely has it now middle linebacker isaiah tucker could fall to us naturally he's projected to go in the third to fourth round he looks really good pass coverage archetype with the b zone coverage and just a phenomenal athlete so middle linebacker could fall to us so not really going to be probably too aggressive to get justin booth maybe we just naturally let isaiah tucker or someone like that fall down to us we do got some uh, edge rushers here we got to get somebody to play opposite side of chase young that kendricks looks okay i mean and look it's the third to fourth fourth round so like you're not going to be getting home runs and you're not going to be finding you know 80 plus rated players down here but i feel like we still could come away with somebody solid zach kendricks here is a speed rusher out of wyoming 6'4 262 pounds so pretty good size b finesse moves to go along with b tackle He's an okay athlete, nothing too crazy, but nothing, uh, you know, subpar either. But then Kirk Murphy is an interesting one. He's a day three pick, so we could definitely 
you know, grab him organically. That also sounded really weird. We're going to grab Kirk Murphy organically. I don't know. That just sounds strange. But he's a speed rusher, B finesse moves, and still C power moves for a day three speed rusher. It's pretty good. And he looks to be a, a little bit better athlete than Kendricks. He has great to elite acceleration, good to great speed, and great to elite change of direction as well as jumping. So Kirk Murphy could be somebody that falls down the board and we pick him up maybe with like that sixth round or seventh round pick. Again, not going to make too much noise in the draft probably, but if we could come away with just a couple steals, I like the way our team is right now as it is. And I don't really want to change that too much. So I'd be happy with that. Not going to go through the Chiefs roster here because it's pretty much the usual suspects. But one big difference is no more Travis Kelsey. He retired in this franchise. And what did the Chiefs do? They went out and drafted his replacement. Superstar tight end Bryce Callaway we have to deal with. Two-year pro out of Arkansas. He was the second round pick in 2024. So I guess, uh, you know, no Travis Kelsey, no problem apparently and we are going to go ahead and i think we'll rock the alternate uniforms today need to spice things up a bit we are at home which is nice but this is going to be a tough game against a very tough opponent so without further ado guys let's get down to sentinels field and get ready for the game sunday night prime time and we are putting the ball in the hands of patrick mahomes first shades of the 49ers in the super bowl except for uh this is not overtime this is just the start of the game but what is Mahomes and this offense going to look like? It's the people that you're used to. You know, they got uh, Sky Moore. They got Kadarius Toney. They got Legereus Sneed. They got Chris Jones. Patrick Mahomes only has one interception. So I'm already a scared, scared little boy playing this game here. But we've played, uh, you know, historically played up to competition in other circumstances. You know, I recall beating the Cowboys really big. And uh, just got to make sure you see superstars all over the field here. And that is going to be, oh, dump out to the tight end Bryce Callahan. But Tony Knight, the newly acquired Sentinel out of UCLA, was right there to bat that thing away. And I did make, obviously, defending the deep pass our main focus. And I made throwing it deep our focus on offense as well. I think that J.J. Ford is going to have to have a big game. And will that be a holding call? That's the question. That was Callahan on the reception. By his grace, by his grace. It is a holding call. Very, very good. That's good. Trey Smith, very good right guard, but made a mental error on that one. We're going to press up the line here. Pressure, I mean, we talked about it pre-game. Pressure's hard to get, uh, but I think we're going to have to. Ooh, we had a sentinel right there. Not even sure who that was. We had somebody right there to make a play on the ball. Sky Moore does ultimately come down with that. I think that was Justin Hayward. If he would have just uh, put his hands up there, made a play on the ball, we could have very well came away with the pick. And in this situation here, I think it's best just to press up and maybe play good man defense here. Got to watch out for the little check downs. And it's going to be Pacheco. And Jamin Davis is there to get him. Mahomes tried to set up a little screen, it looked like, in the backfield. Jamin Davis was right there. Of course, he just got a big, big contract extension. Paying off dividends on that one. Andy Reid not happy, but I'm sure Coach CJ Smalls is thrilled. Corey Bohorka is going to boot this thing back to Jahan Dotson, and we are going to need to strike quick. That's one of the reasons why I feel like we lost that Denver Broncos game. Up until like the third quarter, fourth quarter, we just really couldn't do anything. We let the Broncos hang around and uh, ultimately lost that game. But here comes J.J. Ford leading the league in both passing yards and passing touchdowns. Has kind of caught the interception bug as of late. Up until, like, I think week three, he only had one pick. And now he is up to six, but still not leading the league. So that is a very, very good to see. First and ten, we'll see what this pass rush looks like. Remember, Chris Jones has his X Factor activated already to start. It's going to be a good pickup of eight from George Williams, and that will be a good positive play for the Sentinels. See if we can quell this pass rush here early by going screen pass to Dudley Saxton, and Dudley is going to have blockers out in front. Justin Reed came screaming there to get the tackle on Dudley, but that is the best way that you can quell a good pass rush with Chris Jones like the Chiefs have. Get some things going in the screen game. Also, hopefully get some things going in the run game as well. 
to maybe open up some shots for our two big receivers on play action, Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel. Now we're going to roll out here. McLaurin is wide open, and J.J. dots him up. Tried to fake out Justin Reed there, wasn't able to. But within a couple plays here, we do have the ball already almost into the green zone, which you absolutely love to see. Now the question is, do we try with Dudley? Do we feel more confident going in, getting the inside run established or possibly the outside run? I think we start inside. We're going to motion out Bart Burns there so that way uh, Justin Reed follows him and got to watch big Chris Jones. We got a nice block there. Dudley picking up three. Remember, he left last game with the injury, didn't come back. Definitely don't want to see Dudley leaving the game. Now we'll come out single back here, 13 personnel. McLaurin will be in single coverage, but not getting pressed. So I don't really like that. There's Bart Burns, and he hangs on in the middle of the field. Jack Sanborn was there in coverage, but it was a very, very accurate ball by Ford. He wasn't too accurate last game, so good to see my man bouncing back. Coach is saying outside run, and yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm good with it. Let's test it. Let's test it and see what we got. Now, the question is, do we want to run away from the blockers or towards? I think in this situation, we do run towards the blockers, and that proves to be hopefully a smart move as the line shifts. Let's see if Dudley can get a few blocks. Dudley off to the races, and he will score virtually untouched. So good to see my man Dudley back in the end zone and good to see the Sentinels drawn first blood in front of the home fans here against a high powered offense and a high powered defense like the Chiefs have. It is always good to strike first blood. We also will get the ball back after halftime as well. So overall, just a great way to start this one out. With drive number two will yield for Patrick Mahomes and these Chiefs. It's going to be, oh, play fake to Pacheco. Chase Young is right there because Justin Hayward couldn't get Patrick Mahomes. It was a designed quarterback keeper and did not prove to be effective at all for Mahomes and the Chiefs as they did lose three on that play. Bring out our dime package here. Let's get some pressure on Mahomes. Hopefully we can just play some good lockdown coverage in the secondary. Mahomes is scrambling and he has to throw it away. The pressure was, well, not even sure if really the pressure was there. I feel like Mahomes escaped that pocket very prematurely. We see a lot of running quarterbacks do that in Madden. I wouldn't classify Mahomes as a running quarterback at all. Um, but that sense of pressure, you know, we do see people like Justin Fields and Jalen Hurts and quarterbacks like that. They tend to leave the pocket after the first, you know, hint of pressure. Don't really see Mahomes do that too often, but uh, he definitely did it on that one. And I am certainly OK with that. And uh, we're going to bring in. Why do we have? OK, we literally have a linebacker oh. in the backfield. Milo Eifler. Why? On the draw play, I mean, can't really sub him. Please don't fumble. There's like a certain play in my playbook that has no face next to it. I don't know why, and I don't like it. Come out single back again. Going to be another rollout, so hopefully we can hit McLaurin again. Oh, and that time it was really, really good coverage on the play by Phillip Parks, Chiefs' first-round pick, rookie out of Illinois. That was very good coverage there because it looked for a second – like McLaurin was going to make his second catch of the game. Unfortunately, he did not. Now, we're going to come out single back here with a little bunch to the right. And I think Curtis Samuel, who has just been playing absolutely great this season, he got open on his little delayed drag. Another first down for the Sentinels. I think this is a great time to call my once per game single back X bunch nasty. Realize it's very, very early. And if you guys watch this channel, you know all about this play. But you got to put points up on, uh, you know, when you're playing the Chiefs. You got to put points on the board. And a Samuel, no. Oh, my God, Curtis. Yeah, you should look at the ground. You should be disappointed in yourself. I mean, he's having a great season, but come on, man. How do you drop this? Nobody near. I mean, you can't even blame the pressure. You can't, you can't say that, the, you know, Legereus Sneed was there and scared you. He just bobbled it out of his hands. And look, he would have, we would have easily gotten the ball down to the 20, possibly the uh, 25. And due to the drop pass from Samuel, we're going to be forced to punt the ball with Tressway. 
And you just don't see that too often from these receivers. Samuel McLaurin, they're usually sure-handed. But that one was a huge mistake. Let's see if it comes back to bite us. And I think that uh, Nickel Blitz here seems like a pretty good idea. Let's see if Jamin Davis could possibly get in the backfield. Oh, I thought it was going to be a run. That was a nice fake. Mahomes was almost sacked. Cam Curl does make the tackle and another third down. Mahomes so far not testing the, uh, the deep ball. And I am perfectly fine with that. Don't want to see him really test the deep ball. And let's press up and bring a little bit of pressure. And did Kadarius Tony get the line to gain? He's going to be short by a yard. That one was very, very close. Again, a short little check down by Mahomes. So maybe choosing to defend the deep pass was the right thing to do. I don't think I've seen him. Other than that one pass that got called back for uh, for holding, I don't think I've seen Oh, Let this one bounce. Why not? Oh, that was a bad decision. Shouldn't have done that. Oh, please. Thank you. Got a good Sentinels roll. But other than that one pass that got called back for the holding, I don't think I've seen Mahomes throw it, you know, more than uh, 10 yards downfield. 18 seconds to go till the second quarter. I'm going to have Dudley block for me. And we got a little uh, bunch formation there to the right. Give it to Samuel. Okay, so he holds on to that one while he was tackled like a looking like a freaking pinball in a pinball machine there. He holds on to that one, but couldn't catch the wide open one uh, that would have resulted in a huge gainer. But I'm not upset going into the second quarter up 7-0. Definitely not. And the Chiefs really haven't been able to get anything going. But it is the Chiefs. So we got to going up 14 here. I would feel very confident. If we don't go up 14, don't feel confident at all. Let's put it in the hands of our star running back here and see if we can just get this hole. And there's Dudley. Okay. Good enough. Dudley not really running with the, you know too much force or vision here. Or perhaps it's just the... Defensive line of the Chiefs is, is, you know, playing really good, as they tend to do. But it was enough of a game there for the first down to be had. And that's all you can ask for sometimes. So first and ten, let's see who could get open on this play fake. Need some uh, blocks to hold. Jahan, we're going to air it out for him. Legereus Sneed was right there, or Justin Reed, rather. One of the other superstars on this team. There's that play I'm talking about with no right there. Gun draw. Nobody there. Don't uh, understand that one at all. But uh, if you guys watch this channel, you know I typically do coach suggestions unless I absolutely don't have to or absolutely can't, I should say. So second and 10. Let's see who gets open. Hopefully pick this one up. There's Terry. Third and three. Good enough. I'm going to bring up another third down for the Sentinels. Big third down now coming out shotgun here. A little mesh spot concept. I think that's Shahan Dotson. It is. I love our receivers, man. We have a great, great group of receiver core here. Group of receiver core? That doesn't make sense. But anyways, Curtis Samuel, obviously Scary Terry. We got Jahan Dotson. We got big six foot nine, George Williams, Bart Burns as our tight end option. So I just love our receiving room. And that's why I'm not too concerned about not having draft picks. I mean, I would say there's definitely some pieces on uh, defense that we could use. Dudley, can you get the outside? Can you juke Justin Reed? You do. Dudley's best run of the game, picking up nine. But, yeah, there's definitely some pieces I think we need on defense for sure. But as far as our offense, I'm not really too worried about them. I like exactly. I mean, we'll maybe try to pick up maybe a free agent or two, you know, backup tight end. That might be good to have. But aside from that, I really like our guys, and I I don't think we really need to worry about doing too much. Dudley, oh, driven back there. Look, my man's only about five foot eight, five foot nine, so give him a break. Wasn't able to uh, get the first down on that one. Can Dudley pick this up on the draw? That is the question, and he definitely will. I was gonna say that may have even been four down territory because I know I know I sound like a broken record probably, but it's the Chiefs. And you cannot, you got to put up points when you're playing a team like the Chiefs. You absolutely have to put up points. So that could have been four down territory, but lucky for us, not going to have to worry about it. Now, fresh set of downs here. Ball is on the 33. And Curtis, that little delayed route again. It's getting open. Yay. You want to give me five, six yard completions on every single first down? I'll certainly take it. Here's that TE attack that coach likes to call for me so very frequently. 
Time out. Just going to... Oh, God. JJ Ford's so slow. But let's see if Dudley can pick this up. Just need about one good block. And Dudley trying to push the pile. And he can't. So fourth and two. I mean, do we go for this one here? I don't know. I mean, we could go up 10 nothing. I think we just take our points as much as I should probably go for it. Just want to have more than a one score lead against a team like the Chiefs. So I'm fine kicking a field goal. We should be able to boot it through there pretty easy with Joey Sly, and we do. Dudley not really running too great in this one. Maybe we make that the focus after halftime, run outside, possibly. So right now, other than that touchdown, my man is uh, kind of struggling. Holmes coming out tight, single back formation. We've been seeing him uh, pretty much in the shotgun most of this game, and that could be a big play. Oh, but the defense, wow. He was looking for Rasheed Rice, but Quan Martin, Jartavius Quan Martin was there to get him. And that's the thing about our, def our uh, defense that I love, man, our secondary, just loaded with talent, lots of superstars back there. Uh, gonna cancel the blitz from Jamin Davis because I didn't like it, and that is just gonna fly over the outstretched arms of Rasheed Rice. And you know what? Let me just go ahead and show this now, get it out of the way, just in case there's any any doubters, any uh, skepticism there. Still all Madden. I never change the sliders, so the sliders are all the same. Um, this happens to us, you know? We, we lose to teams like, uh, like Denver, for example, and then you've seen us beat teams like uh, Dallas Cowboys, and I mean, not going to talk too much, but we're playing great against the Chiefs. So that's just kind of what the Sentinels do. Now, this could be Pick City for Martin. I saw a little bump there at the end. I would have been, if, if the ref would have called P.I. on uh, Quan Martin there, you would have seen a grown man cry and or throw my controller at the TV screen and or both. Luckily, we didn't have to witness any of that debauchery. We're just going to witness a punt. Sentinels get the ball back. Now, that field goal looking like a pretty good decision. Chance to go up big here before halftime. I feel like either McLaurin, do we press McLaurin? I think we press McLaurin. And if uh, Justin Reed doesn't drop down, maybe we have Dudley on the out. Well, none of that happened. We have Curtis Samuel, though. Need, a, need the ball to get there. Samuel comes back to it. Cross body throw from J.J. Ford. I will take a lot of credit for that because I did use her on to Curtis Samuel. I noticed that that ball... I tried to lob it over the head of the defender there, but I noticed it was going to be well, well short. So I switched on to uh, Curtis, made him come back for it, and I, you know what? I'll take it. We're going to go outside again, away from the blockers, but we're going to ID up Nick Bolton as the mic this time because that should send a couple extra blockers his way, which it did, but Justin Reed or somebody, not sure. That wasn't Justin Reed. I don't know. That was uh, Brian Cook backup strong safety he was there to make the tackle see if we can hit somebody on one of these crossing routes george williams you're six nine justin reed is playing elite and he is an elite back for sure no doubt about that third and seven field goal whatever i'll take it bart burns actually um not gonna streak him but he might be open on this curl route bart sure handed as always Good pre-snap read for your boy. Sentinels are in the driver's seat. Bringing in our fullback, Michael Burton here. Let's see if he can lead the way for Saxon. He just might. Saxon jukes Justin Reed for his second touchdown of the afternoon. Dudley may not be getting it done on the ground in terms of yardage, but he has found pay dirt twice. And Dudley and JJ Ford just proving to be a deadly combination with the air attack, with the rushing attack. And I, apparently it's proven to be too much for the Chiefs to handle, at least thus far. Now, there's still a whole second half of football. And with a minute and 15 seconds left, I know what teams do in Madden. I wouldn't be surprised if they drive down here and put up seven before uh, halftime. But even if that does happen, we have a nice cushion here and we get the ball back after halftime. So as long as we play mistake free, keep uh, getting good positive yardage through the air with Ford. I think we got a pretty good chance in this one see if some pressure can get home here jamin davis and others gonna be trying to get to mahomes and that's gonna be oh sky more broken tackle what did i say i called it literally mere moments ago with a minute and 15 seconds left i know what teams do in madden 
We did stop him on the one, which is nice. Chiefs not, uh, okay, now they elect to use the timeout. Jonathan Allen, I just paid you a ton of money. I need you to, well, okay. Maybe I should have stayed in the 3-4. Did not expect him to give the ball to Pacheco, but why? I mean, I should have. Ball was on the one-yard line, so don't mind me. Just doing stupid things, which I specialize in. 31 seconds to go. I mean, look, I'm not even going to try anything. I'm happy going into the locker room up 17-7. to I mean, maybe I'll do like a little screen pass or something like that. And if we get great yardage, whatever, I take a deep shot. But 17-7, I am good with that. And just got to try to keep this up. Maybe a Jahan Dotson kick return. Is that so much to ask for? Apparently it is. They ask you how you are. You just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Oh my God. Dudley Saxon fumbled the ball. I just tried to run it. Uh, we'll see if it gets called back. I sure hope it does. I don't think it will because Dudley was trying to fight for it. Yep. That ball is on the ground. And that is why, kids. I mean, but in my defense, aside, I mean, I didn't do it. I, I guess I could have just taken a QB kneel, but why wouldn't you at least just try, you know, try for a run there and man, oh man, one time out. I mean, they're at least going to get a field goal. Maybe unless they, uh, okay. They're not even going to elect to. Okay. There we go. So now 17, 10 going to be the score going into the locker room and Dudley. I love your brother, but you just cost us dearly. My friend, and I really hope that that doesn't come back to bite us. I mean, the the yards, not there for the Chiefs. Passing yards look a lot better, but it's just because of that last drive. That is why I always try to score with minimal time left, even before halftime, because teams just do that ever so frequently. And I'll tell you what, uh, let's do run outside as the focus. And I defending the deep pass seemed to work pretty well. So we will leave it at that. Now we do get the ball back, but this could this should have been seven. This is why I can't have nice things in this franchise, man. Could have been 17 nothing going into the locker room, and the Chiefs actually are able to put 10 points on the board in a matter of like a minute. All right, got a lock in here. Got to uh, maintain this lead, Terry. I need you to catch it and run, brother. Good run after the catch on the shallow crosser. JJ Ford now 13 for 18 for a buck 70. But got to watch Dudley Saxon. Make sure he doesn't continue to fumble this ball. That would be absolutely devastating. Now, I switched the focus to running it outside. So let's see if that will prove to be fruitful here. We're going to ID up one of these outside guys as the mic. And if we can get some good blocking. Well, okay. I mean, <laughs> yeah, okay not working man i really wish terry was getting pressed that would be a, it'd be launch city if that were the case um instead we'll just give it to george george williams with his second catch of the afternoon gonna be enough to move the chains and pick up the first down ball is on the 40 yard line here we're coming out shotgun here nice uh little mesh concept bart burns gets some space outside and he is gonna outrun the defender and pick up a good solid gain and uh, now he is swimming here in Sentinels Field. You see it? Coach is calling it. I am going to go TE attack. I did try this a uh, little bit earlier. Did not work. Um, and depending on what that right linebacker does, I need, to, I need to switch my mic. Why is it not letting me switch my mic? No, I don't want to double team that guy. I want to switch my mic to this guy. And let's see if we could possibly roll out and hit said Bart Burns. There he is. Dive to the end zone, baby. Thank you. Now do a little dance on him. Do a little dance on him, Bart. I love the coach always seems to call TE attack when we get down to like within the 20 yard line or something. Sentinels doing the running man in the end zone. You got to love to see it. And, and Ford kind of pulled the Steph Curry. You know, when Steph Curry shoots and then fades away. Ford threw it, kind of looked away, almost as if he knew it was money. We got ourselves a little bit of a cushion here. Two-score lead, which was much, much needed after that tomfoolery that took place a minute before halftime. But the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes were not really too locked in in the first half. Let's see if Andy Reid and the coaching staff made some good adjustments to help him out. I need some good man coverage from the boys here, and I also need Jonathan Allen to actually do something, which he's not. And I was about to say, 
Another drop from Kadarius Tony. That was actually Sky Moore. But Kendall Fuller was there. It wasn't like it was an easy catch or anything like that. So uh, Kendall Fuller was there. And Fuller, of course, has been pretty much the anchor in our secondary in this season. And going to be an outside run to Pacheco. We haven't seen nor heard too much of him except for that uh, one touchdown that he had. Emmanuel Forbes going to give him an earful while he's down there on the ground. Let's just play good, solid zone coverage. I think if we can do that, got to watch the tight end there, Bryce Callahan. feel like Mahomes would probably target him. And Tony Hoover, put your hands up. I traded up to the 10th overall pick from the Packers to get you, and you haven't done diddly squat this season. Put your hands up. Make a play on the ball. You're right there with Rasheed Rice. All you got to do is put your hands up. Tony Hoover has been silent this season. And you know what? Shame on Hoover because I've been waiting to say that Hoover, the vacuum cleaner, just sucked in a ball. And Bruh. he's not allowing me to say that. And why is Sky Moore such a problem? All right. I think it's time for a little bit of pressure here. Let's see if we can get... Oh, come on. Why is no, Why are my defenders not putting their hands up, man? That time it's Quan Martin. I mean, I can't... Look, I, I'm not crazy. Quan Martin, if he puts his hands up, he could have a pick right here. There he is. I mean, I guess a little bit out of position, but do something. Make an attempt. Like, you're a superstar DB. At least make an attempt on the ball. Make it look good. I'm going to go ahead and send McLaurin deep. It's PA cross. No, it's not. Single back X bunch. Nasty. And yes, the coach did call it. Not that it matters. I can uh, literally do whatever I want. No, 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 no. <laughs> I did not even see Brian Cook lurking there. That one could have been absolutely devastating. We really, really dodged a bullet. Now, um, McLaurin maybe on this corner route. If we can get the ball. Oh, he's open. He's open. Terry, hang on. And Terry's still going. Great touch pass from Ford. Terry going to dap up the defender there. Brandon Jones being a gentleman about it. Well done. He easily could have talked trash because McLaurin just came down with a dart from J.J. Ford. So now Ford and McLaurin both have their X-Factors on. Let's see if that does anything in this game. There's Bart Burns who's having himself a game too. We hung back there in the pocket for just long enough. Bart Burns now at five receptions for 80 yards. Trent McDuffie was able to uh, get the stop on him. This is a very good drive from the Sentinels, but... It's not going to matter if we don't pay this thing off with some points. So let's please, please do that. Logan Thomas, I'm looking for you, brother. And there he is, back corner of the end zone. J.J. Ford gets his first touchdown pass, I think. No, second. Both to a tight end, too. Logan Thomas has one. Brian Bur I keep saying Brian Burns. Bart Burns has one. I knew if we could just let Logan Thomas's route develop, eventually he was going to get open. And get open, he did. And now the Sentinels go up 31-17. to 17. But Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs and Logan Thomas just got injured. So catches a touchdown, gets injured. Hopefully he can come back. Logan Thomas will come back. So that was short-lived. I guess he just needed to uh, go on the sideline there, get a shot in a pill or something like that. And now he's back in it. But we got to watch Bryce Callahan, the tight end here. So I'm going to pretty much always have a body on him. Well, there's Isaiah Pacheco not getting it done on the ground, but catching a nice little wheel route there. So pressure would be nice. I definitely mistimed that one. So that one is on me and crossing route open in the middle of the field. It's a fumble, though, and that one's clean. And Justin Hayward picks it up. Bryce Hallahan, the two-year pro out of Arkansas. Second round pick back in 2024. Coughed that ball up. Cam Curl was there and also Kendall Fuller. I think Fuller may have been the one to jar that thing free. And the awareness from Justin Hayward was on full display because he picked that thing up in a hurry, was not about to let uh, any of the Chiefs members pounce on that ball. And now that was just the treat that we needed. Let's see if Dudley can get something going finally. And again, Justin Reed just always there to cause havoc in the run game. Bart Burns on the drag, or maybe even McLaurin. Nope, it's going to be Burns. Why would it not be Burns? Bart Burns having an electric game. 
JJ Ford now over 300 yards as well and no interceptions so far. RPO, let's see. We're going to give it to Jahan. Give me a block or two. Okay, Samuel. Samuel with a great block, but Jahan Dotson, I tried to cut back inside. Curtis Samuel is doing his thing in the blocking game. I give my man an A plus for effort, definitely, because he was blocking like his contract depended on it. But unfortunately, just couldn't make the last cut that I needed. And 35 seconds to go here until the end of the fourth. So the question is, can Dudley finally, finally get something done on the ground? This one may be it. One man to beat. It's, it's always going to be Justin Reed. <laughs> one more quarter to go here. Can the Sentinels hang on and pull up the surprising and unexpected upset against the 6-1 and one Kansas City Chiefs? I sure hope so. But that will also make me feel a lot worse about the uh, Denver Broncos game that just happened because we definitely should have won that one. And then you go to play a team like the Chiefs and you end up winning and questions start to get asked. But if we win this game, we should be first place in the NFC East, I believe. And we're going to go to six foot nine, George. And I'm telling you, man, I am telling you, Justin Reed is a freaking problem. <laughs> Field goal, not the worst thing in the world, if that's what ends up happening. But there's Thomas. Can he get his second touchdown of the afternoon? That should be a defensive flag, too, I believe. Not sure how it could be holding, because that thing came out way, way late. <laughs> Damian Lewis, man, what are you doing back there? So thanks a lot, Damian. Appreciate you, brother. Nice doing business with you. Um, Jahan. Maybe should have went to Curtis Samuel instead. And third and 20. I mean, I'm not doing anything crazy. So this is a time that I will go uh, away from coach suggestions here. Just a screen pass to Dudley. I'm not going to try to play hero ball. Keep me in good field goal range. Let's go up 34-17. And put the pressure on the Chiefs. Uh, okay, well, fourth and 20 it'll be. And out comes Joey Slot. This one is key, though, because it will make it a 17-point game. So hopefully I can drill this. That should be good. Should have the leg. And it is. So 34-17 is the score. Defense, we're not going to play conservative. You know, we're not going to be sending, you know, full house blitz or anything like that. But we're not going to play conservative because too often we do that and teams march down the field and pull out some miraculous comeback. So we're going to play slightly conservative, but also slightly aggressive as well. Let's please stop the kick return. Thank you. We're guessing pass. We're shading inside. And I am going to be watching tight end Bryce Callahan probably the whole way. There's Mahomes and Dante Fowler is there. And I mean, do you go for it if you're Andy Reid? Yeah, I was gonna say, I feel like you kinda, you kinda got to go for it, right? There's not really much of a choice. And I think zone coverage is the answer. I think we just play good zone coverage. Get the Chiefs off the field. Again, gonna watch Callahan, because he seems like he's the Chiefs uh, or Mahomes' primary option, but maybe I should have been watching Sky more, because that's about his third or so big play of this game. Yeah, he's over 100 yards now. Wow. Uh we're going to press up here. Dime blitz man coverage. I really wish Jonathan Allen could like actually do something. And I really wish my DBs would put their hands up because we are letting Mahomes pad the stat sheet here. And for nothing, the first, the whole entire first half, he didn't play good at all. And now he's, you know, threatening to go over uh, 300 yards. And that's because I feel like a good reason because of that is our DBs just not putting their hands up. We could have, probably have, a couple picks in this one, I would think. Tony Hoover making a tackle. That's maybe the first time I've called his name in this entire freaking franchise. Now, this drive is taking a lot of time off of the clock, so that is good. Justin Hayward, free rusher. Jamin, man. I might title this video, My DBs Don't Put Their Hands Up. Like, that, le that legitimately might be the title of this video because I don't know what else to do, man. I'm not even used to controlling them either, so usually the CPU is pretty good about doing that. And there's Callahan, Tony Hoover making some tackles now. And I guess silver lining, you know, regardless, I mean, you feel like, yes, the Chiefs are probably uh, going to score here. 
But silver lining, they're taking a ton, a ton of time off of the clock. So maybe, you know, could be just a little bit too little too late for them. And the Excuse me, what? I was usering somebody, Dante Fowler. Now I realize he is, or maybe that's James Smith Williams. I don't know. It's one of them. But I'm usering him. And I even press, oh my God, look at that. I mean, you can't write this stuff. Now, okay, is that James Smith Williams? No, it's Fowler, okay. I realize Dante Fowler is not, you know, gonna be out here getting picks, but you can't just put one of those big old man clubs up and just get a tip of that pigskin. Booth review though, also that sounded very weird. Was the receiver out of bounds, Tony? He might have only got one foot in. That one, I think, will be coming back, as a matter of fact. So we might have just dodged a bullet. And nope. Play is going to stand. We're going to be up by 10 with five minutes to go. So now we're not playing the Chiefs. No. We're now playing Father Time. I feel like the Chiefs might be expecting a run here. So this could be a perfect time for a play action boot rollout. Okay. So this drive is terrible. I We've so far taken no time off the clock and we've lost three yards. That's how this drive has gone. So please, please, somebody, George. Okay, that's gotta be roughing or so, it's, it's gonna be holding. It's gonna be holding, I know it. Yeah. Pass interference. Thank you. We just Automatic should go do and be doing some praying. Uh, at the altar right now because not only do we keep the drive alive but jj ford would have had his first pick of the game and you know we're trying to keep my man clean so whoever that was i didn't even see it because i was too riled up thank you but dudley not showing up here in a time where i really really need him to and now we really like we can't just rely on the ground game here unfortunately but luckily curtis samuel was born a long time ago and just go down man just go down just go down just go down now this could be a prime opportunity if our receivers can hold some blocks which i mean they did but justin reed I am just so sick of calling his name play after play after play. Coach is saying slip screen. I mean, yeah, show me you can stop it. I'm going to call it until you can stop it. And nonetheless, I mean, aside the point, the coach is also suggesting it as well. Oh, my God, we got to get this ball off. Dudley's going to get it. He does get it. That should be ball game. And we should hopefully never let the Chiefs touch the ball again. I mean, worst case scenario, we come away with a field goal, push this thing up to a 13 point game. But Dudley, even though he's having not the best game, still finding ways to make huge impacts in these games. Third and four, we're gonna go draw play here. I mean, if we get it, awesome. If we don't, we don't. And uh, yeah, I mean, definitely a field goal. Just take the points, whatever. I still don't like the fact that there's a minute and 48, though. I'm not going to go for this as much as I want to. Every bone in my body is telling me to do it. I mean, still, maybe that wasn't even like it's it, it was going to be a two score game regardless. It's a two score game now. But now the Chiefs would have to score two touchdowns in less than two minutes with no timeouts and get an onside kick, which not saying it couldn't happen. We saw that. Was that in this series or the SFL series? I'm not sure. I think it was. I think it was the SFL. And if you guys haven't watched the SFL, go check it out. It's a pretty good series. But not saying it couldn't happen, but highly, highly improbable. All right, Sense, just play good defense, and this game is ours. That's all we got to do. We'll give him those checkdowns, and he stays in bounds as well. So obviously, they're going to go into hurry up mode, which I absolutely hate. Teams always cook me on hurry up mode. I don't know why, but they always do. And there's Pacheco, but again, Chiefs got a lot of ground to cover, so that's not really going to uh, to get the job done. They're going to have to move much quicker than that if they hope to achieve anything on this drive. And it looks like Mahomes is just content with padding his stats. They do get a free timeout. That should be a clock runoff, but in Madden, I don't think it will be. Patrick Mahomes, Hail Mary attempt fails. So we will come out kneel formation here and pull out the shocking upset against the Kansas City Chiefs. 
Gonna push these Sentinels to... And yo, what's up with these coaches littering on my field, man? I got staff here in Sentinels Field. We pay them a lot of money to keep this thing clean. Don't be throwing your Gatorade cups on the field, Andy Reid. Now you're getting me all hot and bothered. But anyways, we are gonna move to 5-3 and three on the season. And that was a great bounce back game. And we had some really, you know, some key storylines in this one. J.J. Ford played great. Almost had that one pick, but it got wiped away because of the pass interference. And then Mahomes' stats are going to look great, but it really wasn't until like that final couple drives. Dudley does finish with 81 yards, but only three yards per carry average. That is not going to get it done in the future and also had that one fumble as well. Sky Moore played great, but so did Bart Burns, 6 for 91. McLaurin, 4 for 88. Samuel, 6 for 82. And uh, Tony, who is now hurt, had a pretty big game. And also Logan Thomas had that big, big touchdown as well. We did not get any sacks from either team and no picks. So it was mainly just uh, offensive explosion from both teams. But how about that? Since getting back into the win column, five and three, and we may just be first place in the NFC East above the Dallas Cowboys. Pairing for offense led by Patrick Mahomes probably results in a lot of sleepless nights. I was losing sleep just thinking about this game today. So getting this win must help. Definitely. He's a great player. And anytime you're able to step up to that challenge, it's going to be a nice boost to the team's confidence. Our entire team earns 1000 XP and Jonathan Allen will have his X factor active to start the game, which I mean, cool. But Allen did not do anything to, to force Patrick Mahomes to get the loss in that one. And game record here, we'll see what we get for doing this, for completing this challenge. Always facing a player like Chris Jones, blah, blah, blah. Do we want temporary boost or XP reward? We're going to go with the XP reward because our guys are hardworking. They put in a ton of work every week to get ready for the challenge. And we should have a lot of XP to go around the team here. Our offensive line is going to earn plus 2,500, and that is just awesome. So great to see the boys pull out another dub. We moved to five and three, and we have the Bucks and the Vikings coming up next. I'll probably go through the stats next week and you know show you guys how our players are performing and whatnot. So make sure to tune in next time. And that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. But as always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.